Our main topic today is American Sign Language. What is it? Why don't people know more about it? Why is it a language used by approximately one and a half million deaf Americans and not in the curriculum of every school in America? Well, to answer these questions, I have brought in two special guests who will give us a little more insight into the programs available in our area. Now, American Sign Language is a really cool topic because it's similar to English, but entirely unique at the same time. It's got its own grammar structure, contextual meaning of words, and rules for facial expression. This language was first brought to the United States by Laurent Clare and Thomas Gallaudet in 1816. The name Gallaudet may sound familiar because of Gallaudet University in Washington, D.C. It was named after Gallaudet because Gallaudet was the founder of the college and helped to bring ASL to the United States. It has also been in the news a lot recently with news from Gallaudet's first deaf female president, new opportunities being created for students, national trends in the schools for the deaf, and the presence of deaf culture in the White House. But today we're embodying the growth of ASL by focusing on its role in Westminster, Maryland. And we're here with Jackie Claudie, who's going to tell us a little bit more about her experiences with the language and how we can get involved. Hi, Jackie. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. So to start off, can you tell me what ASL classes you've done, you've taken over the years? So when I was younger, I started with Baby Sign, and then I was in different ASL clubs. I have currently finished ASL 1 through 3 at Westminster High School, and I'm taking ASL 4. Very cool. So could you tell me a little about, have you had the same teacher throughout high school? Yes, Charlene Van Dusen has been my teacher all throughout the two years I've been making it at Westminster High School. And do you, do you enjoy her as a teacher? She's an amazing teacher. She's also a great person. Just, it's a lovely class to have with. So what, what first really got you interested in ASL? What made you want to go and take it in high school over any other language? The reason I really wanted to take it in high school was because I originally when I was younger was mostly fluent in sign language and I'm now trying to relearn it and have better grammar structure and have a deeper understanding of the language and just how prominent it can and will be in the future. So is there any other ways you can be involved with American Sign Language at Westminster? There's ASL Club where we are currently trying to plan different events and possibly trips that different people even if they don't know sign and just want to get introduced to it can become a part of and join in. And you think there's a lot of interest at the high school? Yes, I believe so. There are a lot of people, if you look around, that are signing in the hallways, or they'll watch you if you start signing, and you can see the, in the intrigue in their eyes, and they just want to know what you're doing. And then they end up taking ASL 1. So it's obvious you're very passionate about the language. Do you plan on continuing your studies with the language after high school? Yes, I'm hopefully planning to get my ASL interpreting certification and go to a college where I can also minor in sign language and deaf studies. Very cool. So you are currently a sophomore at Westminster? Yes. So you still have two more years. What do you plan to do after you complete ASL 4 so that you don't lose touch with American Sign Language? Well, I have a friend who has a deaf stepfather and I talk to him or sign with him. I'm involved in ASL clubs, so I'm going to continue with that so I don't lose my touch. I'm going to keep using the language whenever I can just to practice and try and get involved in the community more so I can just keep it up. Is there anything that just stands out about ASL that makes it completely different from anything else you've learned? From anything else meaning language? Uh, language, other classes, anything. Well, ASL is easy to grasp in the sense of it's more enjoyable because you can act silly at certain times, with especially facial grammar. Facial grammar can be the funniest thing you've ever seen on a person because they'll be trying to ask you a question and then the eyebrows will just shoot up into their hairline. But it's very different because it's still very structured in the sense of it's a hard class. It's not something you can kind of just muscle your way through without doing anything. You have to be involved in it, everything that you're doing in that class and try your best at everything. But it can be more fun at times because of the amount of games you're allowed to play and how it's able to help you interact with different people. You get to know people more because in ASL 3 and 4, you're not allowed to use your voice. So you're relying on this language that you've been learning for, at that point, either two or three years and you're putting it to use to be able to talk to people who are also sharing the same interest. So it helps you also connect with other people. Very cool. So one question I'm sure everyone is wondering in the back of their mind, how do you take a test 
in American Sign Language classes because it, it has to be different. Well, there are different types of tests. There are written tests on such things as grammar and vocabulary. For finals, usually what happens is you'll have two visual things where for our school, Miss Van Dusen will sign certain signs or sentences and you have to interpret them into English on your paper. There's also watching videos and having to answer questions and then there's the written test for us. If you have this question, what type of grammar structure would you use when writing it in ASL gloss? Or what hand orientation do you have when you sign the number five? It's different things, but there's also th such things as the Maryland biliteracy test, where for other languages, it'll cost about $20 because it's just a written pack that they hand to you. But for ASL, it's about $120 because they have to have another person in there to have a conversation with you. So it depends on which type of test you're taking. Well, that's very interesting. I, would, I wouldn't know. <laughs> um, what, what else do you love about ASL? Is there anything that stands out among everything else that you just can't get enough of? I love the culture involving and surrounding the language because people try to say that, oh, ASL is a made up language. It's not foreign, but it's not English at all in the sense of it's not signed English, it's ASL, it's American Sign Language. It's got its own grammar structure, facial grammar, and it has a culture that revolves around this with schools and jobs and different organizations that, yes, they have such things as traditions that they have inside of their community that are completely different from American culture. So. Very cool. Well, thank you, Jackie, for coming in today and giving us some further insight into ASL in Carroll County. Next, we're going to go to our field correspondent, Jimmy, who is with our second guest, and together, I guess, they're going to teach us some more about how to use ASL. Because I just thought it was awesome. I wanted to learn. I know a deaf person and I wanted to talk with him. So the alphabet is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. So yesterday for dinner, I had chicken and french fries and soup. Well, today, for lunch, I had a chicken pasta and apple and water. Name signs are basically what you use when you have a um, someone familiar to you. So like, if I was talking to you, you would have a name sign. My name sign is Kelsey, a deaf person, or a knowledgeable, more knowledgeable ASL person has to give it to you. But it's basically, it's made out of like characteristics about yourself. So like mine was this, because the first letter of my name, and then I have freckles. So you always sign your first name, your last name, um, where you learn sign, if you're deaf, and why you learn. Well, I think sign language is just an amazing language to learn in general, well, not just in Carroll County, but I think it's one that should be more spread out. There are a lot of deaf people around the country, around our community, and they're actually really fun people if you get to know them, but sometimes it can be very intimidating talking to them, and I think sign language is a way to connect both with them. It increases your learning. You're learning something new. It's like learning another language, like Spanish or French. And I just think it's a very fun language. It's a lot, it's easy to learn, but you have to make sure that you always like keep up with it. And I just hope that it spreads around the community more.
Thanks Jimmy and Kelsey for teaching us some basic communication in ASL. If you're interested in some more ways to get involved, you can go to the link below, which has upcoming deaf and ASL events in Maryland. Another cool thing that's coming up soon is CCBC's production of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. This show will be signed and spoken. For more information, call 443-840-2787. That's all we've got for you today, and I hope you learned something new. We'll see you next time on The Interns.